Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I just forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What is happening third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 23. All right, so I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. If you're like, wait, there's a worksheet? If you click the link below or somewhere around this video, it will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in this series. So now that you're ready with your worksheet, go ahead and pause the video and solve number one and number two on your own. You're gonna throw down your bed as if these two questions were on the test and then come on back to check your work and collect any helpful strategies that you can all right I'll see y'all in a little bit come on back Alrighty, third grade, welcome back. Let's go ahead and go over these two questions and see how you did. If you've been watching this series from start to finish, you know that the very first thing that I like to do is to investigate the question type. And here we have one, two, three, four answer choices. So what kind of question is this? Yeah, it's a multiple choice question. Jot that down if you have not already. All right, and now let's go ahead and read the question, mark up our text, and make sure that it makes sense, okay? Which statement, so the statements are right down here, is not true about the rhombus below? I also want to point out that sometimes you might see the word rhombi. That just means more than one rhombus, okay? Don't freak out when you see that. It looks very similar, right? Okay, so which statement, which of these is not true about this rhombus right here? Let's go ahead and read each answer choice and figure it out. This says a rhombus must have equal sides. Equal sides, what's another word for equal sides? Congruent, right? This could also be congruent sides. It means that all sides are the same. And actually, that is what a rhombus is known for. A rhombus has to have all equal sides. So this is true. But we are looking for the one that is not true. So let's keep going. B, a rhombus must have right angles. A right angle looks like this, right? As a square corner. And while a rhombus can have a right angle, it is possible because technically a square that has all sides the same, just use your imagination and pretend that's a square, okay? <laughs> a square has to have all right angles, but a square also has to have all sides the same. Those little marks right there mean that all sides are the same for a square. A square is technically a type of rhombus because a rhombus must have all equal sides, but a rhombus does not have to have all right angles. So this 
If it said a rhombus sometimes has right angles, that would be true. But when it says must, like it absolutely must have to, that is not true. That is false. So that's probably going to be our answer. So we should just go ahead and bubble it in, right? No, we need to go through choice C and D just to make sure that we pick the correct answer. C, a rhombus is a, what's this word right here? Yeah, a quadrilateral. A rhombus is a quadrilateral, and a quadrilateral is simply a four-sided polygon. Now, is a rhombus a four-sided polygon? Well, let's look. Let's count up the sides. We've got one, two, three, four sides. So is it a quadrilateral? Yes, this is true. Therefore, we can eliminate it. I'm going to eliminate that one up there too. Because again, we're looking for the one that is not true. Let's move on to choice D. A rhombus has four angles. Four angles, not four right angles, but just four angles. Well, where are the angles? They're right there. One, two, three, four. Awesome, all right? And also a quadrilateral has to have four angles too. It's a four-sided polygon with also four angles. So this is also true. The only one that is not true is which one? Yeah, choice B. So let's bubble that one in. Make sure that if you ever have a question that has that word not, that you take it very carefully, okay? Because that means that there's gonna be a lot of correct answers and sometimes that's a lot going on in our brain. So just take it nice and slow. And notice how I marked up my text, right? I showed my thinking on paper. That's what I'm hoping that you will do when it comes time for the FSA too. And not just on the FSA, it's a good strategy to use on classwork, quizzes, homework, everything. I always mark up my text. Next. All right, go ahead and pause the video and make any adjustments that you need to make and then join me for number two when you're ready. It's time for number two and I'm noticing <laughs> I forgot to put the question type there. So don't worry. Before you watch this video, I will make sure that I put the question type on your paper, okay? If for some reason you don't have it, it's because your teacher happened to have printed it out before I had the chance to make the correction, so sorry. All right, so this is, I'm seeing a lot of words, I'm seeing some boxes with answer choices in it. it, looks like we're filling in the blanks. So what kind of question type is this? It's an editing task. This was one of the reasons why I wanted to create the Math FSA Bootcamp because my other version, the How to Pass the Math FSA series, did not have any questions that look like this and I wanted to make sure y'all had some practice with it. Okay, let's read it and mark up our text. The two figures shown are measured in inches. The two figures, what are they talking about? They're talking about this right here and this one right there, okay? Here, what kind of figure is this with one pair of parallel sides? Yeah, this is a trapezoid. And if we look over here, if we check out the bottom end, top and then side to side, my eyes spy two pairs of parallel sides and this Particular quadrilateral is also rocking four right angles, which means that it is a rectangle, right? All right, complete the statement about the two figures for each box. Fill in the bubble before the word or phrase that is correct. So here we go. The shapes or the figures as they're referred to. They're also called polygons. They're also called polygons because they gotta be closed, gotta be straight, three or more sides of flat plane shape. They're polygons. All right, so these, the shapes are both trapezoids, rectangles, parallelograms, or quadrilaterals. Well, let's go through it. These shapes are both trapezoids. Well, we know that one shape is a trapezoid, right? But the other one is a rectangle. And what do we know about a trapezoid? It has one pair of parallel sides. So no, these are not trapezoids. Only one is. The shapes are both rectangles. Well, no, this one is a rectangle, right? It has two pairs of parallel sides. It has four right angles. This one is a rectangle, but there aren't any four right angles here. So let's eliminate that one. They are both parallelograms. Well, a parallelogram has to have two pairs of parallel sides, okay? That means we check out the bottom end, top and then side to side and see if they can go on forever. So here we have this 
These two are parallel. They could go on and on forever and never ever cross. But these two right here, if we kept going, we checked out the side to side, eventually they would, you can't see it there, but eventually they would cross if we kept going on. So there's only one pair of parallel sides here. There are two pairs for the rectangle, but they are not both parallelograms. The shapes are both quadrilaterals. What is a quadrilateral? It has four sides and four angles, right? It's a polygon with four sides and four angles. So we have one, two, three, four sides here, and one, two, three, four angles. So the trapezoid is a quadrilateral, and a rectangle we know is a quadrilateral as well. So yes, that is the correct answer choice there. Bubble and D. And why are they both quadrilaterals? Because they have right angles? No, because the trapezoid doesn't have right angles, right? Because they have parallel sides? No, or because they have four sides and four angles? Yes. To me, the standard is a little bit wonky because they ex you're expected to know what a parallelogram looks like without using the word parallel. So it was kind of hard to avoid it here, but I just wanted to get across what kind of question you might get with this. So that is how you do it. All right, now is the time for me to show you some more videos to practice your quadrilateral. So here we go. All right, third grader. So if you are thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much to learn about quadrilaterals, I can't get all the vocabulary right. I have a ton of videos for you to check out to help you get more practice, okay? When you don't understand something, it doesn't mean that you run away and you avoid it. It means that you tackle it head on and you practice, okay? It is okay to not be super confident yet, but it's what you do with that. And that's why I send you to all these different videos. So the very first link that I would like for you to check out is to McCarthy Math 155. You do have to become a member in order to access the videos in McCarthy Math 155. However, everybody is allowed to have a seven day free trial because I want you to check it out and see how amazing it is. You want to check out unit 10 if you want some more practice with quadrilaterals. And I have a song on YouTube. It's also on my website too. It's a geometry song that provides a really fun way to to help you remember all the different vocabulary words, okay? So totally check that out. In fact, in McCarthy Math 155, we take the lyrics from the song and we break it down to teach you that. We as in me, but you and I, we work together on that. McCarthy Math 155 is a high energy, jam packed math intervention that students and teachers and schools and districts are loving. So please check this out. In fact, I have teachers emailing me all the time saying, my students love watching these videos. Thank you so much for making them. They are learning so much. And that's why I do what I do. I love doing it. I love hearing that from you as well. So check out McCarthy Math 155. The next link that I would like for you to pay attention to is to my older series, my How to Pass the Math FSA series. This was the first series that I created on YouTube YouTube. Back when the FSA for third grade was a computer-based test. So some of the questions, they might look a little bit different just because now it's a paper-based test, which is why I created the Math FSA Bootcamp series. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA series provides great practice. Teachers have been using it for years with great success in their classroom. So please check out the link that I have below to the same standard that we worked on today. I will also link the geometry video that I was talking about, the music video. It's a little fast, but you've got it. I know y'all can sing so you, you'll get it down. Also, I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, could you take a second to tap that like button? Thank you so much if you just did because that means that you're supporting my mission. You see, there are so many students out there, third, fourth, fifth graders who struggle with math. And I am on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many students as I possibly can. So when you smash that like button, you are actually transforming somebody's life. So that is really cool. Thanks for doing that. While you're at it on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, oh my gosh, this is the last episode. Bah! <laughs> That's all right. That means that you guys got this. You've got the practice that you need. You're ready to go. So let me send you off the right way one more time, okay? Before we go, I just want you to know that you, third grader, you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. 
watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers who are ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose what? Kindness. And you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all next year because I've got a whole new round of videos for you. All right. Work hard. Go rock that math FSA. You have learned so much. Don't stress about it. Just throw down your best. That's all that you can do, right? Don't stress. Just throw down your best. And I cannot wait to see you all on whatever next episode you watch. Bye, guys.